presentation title on the list is a top part. And I believe, and because this work, and caused by this part of the work, so I put these two together. And the author for the top part is Songshine and myself, and for the whole things, that's a whole team, I put all the names over here. Okay. Start with the uh, University of Warwick. And Warwick um, is in the UK, not like uh, Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, associated with the city name, everybody know where it is. And Warwick University um, is uh, located in Coventry. Coventry is uh, in the Midlands of the UK, and only takes one hour to London and 20 minutes to Birmingham to the, some other major cities in the very prestigious location. If you come to visit Warwick, and do come to Coventry rather than Warwick. So, so it should be. To face, face which one? Face uh, this direction. Okay. So Warwick University is a, a young university in the UK. It was established in 1965, but uh, it's doing well. And in the past uh, many years, it's kept uh, on the top, one of the top 10 universities. So and people always call Warwick University is the best modern university in the UK. Okay. So that's my presentation's structure. Start from background and also campus energy system and the living laboratory and then modeling of the uh, system and with limited uh, and infrastructure resources and the discussions. So start with the Warwick University again. Here is a campus map of the Warwick University. Warwick University has a four sites and it's very green universities. That's this one's the main campus and there are around over 150 buildings from the very beginning, when Warwick University was set up, and we set up our own combined heat and power generation, so we generate electricity and to supply campuses heating and the electricity and for self-sufficient. So with this energy system, so we have a, associated with the energy system, we have a 500 cubic meters, some more storage, and contribute and to optimization of CHP operations. And also we have, we have a 19 kilometers pipe work to distribute low temperature heating around campus. So it, we can call it as a typical and the local multi-vector energy system on campus. With this system, we we'll start thinking, we, why don't we take advantage to use this system to do some local energy system study? So this why, and I think that's the explanation is how the uh, combined heat and power system works. So use gas turbine to generate the electricity and the recycle the exhaust heat to warm up the campus and also provide a hot water supply. So with this system, and we start thinking to use this and to, for optimization study, how to do it. And we need to make this system and suitable for research. So we, what we put, we put ICT infrastructure on the t and technology on it, and the distributed the data processing, and also you know, the cloud computing and the communications, and also some kind of a, challenges about smart grid we should address on this. So end up we trying to build up on campus to have something uh, looks like this and with a like, proper local energy system with a, a IoT infrastructure built on it. So, so what we did started with in 2017 a company called PowerX and donated uh, 50 kilowatts uh, battery storage to put on campus. And this connected with, to the university, one of 70, uh, 37 substations linked with the sports center, because sports center has a 
most probably a variety of energy usage. So we connected this uh, battery storage with a uh, with, uh, with spot center, and uh, then we upgraded and the energy system, uh, data acquisition system, and the build up this uh, uh, internet connection platform so we can display and the local energy system, all the universities, uh, CHP generation, load, load, electricity load, heat load, and uh, also the storage, and also solar generations, and also we bring the uh, electricity market uh, real-time price and weather condition onto the campus. With this facility, and we also think, start thinking and how to construct this uh, to have a generic structure can be a represent can be used for representation to other kind of research. So that's all stru structure with the four layers, devices, communication simulator, and the management. Okay, so with this, with all these infrastructures in place, so that's current, uh, that's current structure of our laboratory. We have a IoT connection with data acquisitions to all the and the on, on campus and the data acquisition point, and so we have a cloud. We managed a cloud server to communicate with everything, and also we have a local server for backup and also for other research usage. And underneath, with this real time and real energy system. We have our own dashboard to, for data acquisition analysis, and also we have our physical simulators. We have various different energy storage technologies and also other kind of hardware facilities. Also, we have a software simulator. We have 600 megawatts supercritical power plants. We have CCGD power plant. We have various things, and can be connected with the system to do real stuff and also some simulated together for real-time simulation and also hardware in the loop simulation and facilities. So that's end up we have this uh, living laboratory and also associated with the university ambition to reduce CO2 emission and save university electricity bill or energy bill. And the university is uh, facing a kind of a transition trying to make a campus greener and uh, uh, low cost. So all, we started our research and in different projects. And here I'm just going to give you a one of our work and associated with this uh, submission to this particular conference. So that's modeling and optimization of a distributed network based on source limited infrastructure. Again, come back to the university campus. We, we now we have a CHP and uh, for the combined heat and power uh, generations, university use a thermally led control method. That means our electricity generation is really followed heating or thermal load. And very often we generate too much electricity and we, can't, we cannot use of them, so we have to gave to grid for free because we don't have export lessons. And many cases, we don't generate enough. Then we have to buy electricity. Uh, in addition to pay natural gas bill, university pay a few million pounds of just purely just electricity bill. And for the university campus, every year we have probably put uh, two new buildings on campus. With this growth, with this prediction, of electricity bill, if we don't do anything, we will, we will be doubled in 2025. So that's why university is trying to do something, and then also trying to be greater. So that's why we start with uh, solar potentials and for campus. And we studied all the building, possible rooftop, and the locations and the facing directions, and did some calculations. So for the whole campus, all possible building, if we can put some solar panel on it, and this kind of coefficient uh, times on it. So that's our calculation on the campus. We possibly we can put a 3.8 megawatts solar PV. And uh, in the past, because currently the university has some solar based on past generation, 
And UK is not a place with a good sunshine, always have a cloud and the raining. And so the maximum probably can reach is 1.5. That's around 40% of the design capacity. Based on this uh, design capacity, we scale up the whole year solar generation. That's the curve for the whole year generation. Then pick up particular two months. And this is July, this one is November. And no matter which month when we look at, and the solar generation always in line with uh, this blue line is low to demand. And this purple line is a CHP generation. This yellow is the electricity we, we bought from grid. And below this zero line, that means we generate too much. We just export and to the grid and it just gave it to go grid for, for free. So that means solar generation at least in line with everything. That means we don't need any additional and uh, kind of a facility. We should be able to and digest all the solar generations, just say how, if this is economically viable or not. So we did this uh, economic analysis based on current uh, capital cost of solar. And uh, so that's our, if we install 4.5 megawatts solar panel on the rooftop, and that's a cost. And based on the UK weather conditions, and that's predict probably 14 years, we can get uh, the investment back. And certainly if this uh, put on uh, somewhere in the hot area, and um, probably you only, only need to t only take four, uh, five years to get the money back. But uh, before, add on to this, that's the benefit about uh, uh, environment. We will reduce all the emissions and the pollutions by this figure through the calculation if we do have this. So with this suggestion, we put the suggestion to the University Energy Center and the estates, and they start to have another question, because we, when we install over megawatts solar panel and the generation on campus, we have to get local uh, distribution network and the operator's permission. To get permission, we have to and have some kind of assessment what kind of impact will be on it. So then that's uh, the work and the paper submitted to the conference and how this impact to the voltage and any power loss on the network. That's a study. So with the solar integrations, that's probably you will have a three, with the solar and without solar, you will have this three phase imbalance and also voltage deviation from the desired value. So with this, we use a traditional method plus kind of intelligent algorithms and uh, trying to and uh, do optimization to say if we what's the worst scenario what impact on it and also if anything we can do to uh, minimize this so the the optimization is really is trying to minimize the uh, power loss for every individual bus and uh, also they're trying to maximize the voltage stability index. So that's the optimization performance index. And through this uh, process optimizations, and uh, then, so with this uh, particular example, we have a different uh, bus nodes and then put into the simulation model and the Okay, all right, all right. So, and uh, this analysis about power loss, and uh, so this, uh, if you put a red line, if you, we have a solar, solar integrations, and the black line is without solar integrations, and the voltage, and the, also we can see that, and the solar and the without solar, the voltage going up. And all these simulations based on the many days solar generation mean values and to put it into a just average value is not in the particular day or something. So, all right. And then now we start thinking what we can do because we have this uh, battery on campus and the current our uh, battery on campus, we use, the, we use this app charge method at the lowest electricity price, we charge the battery, and then and the highest, we discharge it. And in that case, the battery itself, without doing anything else, 
and it can get his money back around nine and a half years for the, at the moment. But if we use a battery and together with uh, some other things, for example, help solar generation and reduce power loss, so this is why we, we did this. Uh, suppose we combine the solar on the rooftop and with some batteries, but we don't want to put a battery at, at every building, so just limited some locations to see if we can help and improve it. So this is why we call this uh, really restricted or limited resources and for optimization. So that results end up and we can get a, a better and voltage and uh, less and the power loss. So that's uh, study results. And so end up and that's discussions and with this uh, and the university campus energy system. And we now we have a quite good uh, research facility, not just for campus energy system study. We can use this to mimic or to simulate a different scenario to do combined thermal and uh, electric electricity uh, energy system network analysis. And uh, currently, and uh, we're trying to solve another problem because the university put a new building on, add on to extend the low temperature heating system, but uh, the he heating system designed and, uh, by a company, but end up never worked as designed. So there are a lot of problems. And uh, so this also we can use this uh, uh, date and this uh, living lab platform to do dynamic modeling, trying to find what's wrong with it and how to improve it, maybe help with some industry. So that's uh, about uh, this work and finished. Okay, so thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Okay, so for the, for the university, it is a real energy system, and we cannot touch anything to control anything, change anything. And as a research, we can get data, analysis, and make recommendations, and then all the decisions will be made by the university, and uh, they try, probably more commercially uh, mature technology can be used. So, but uh, research is different from Granted. And uh, for the resilience, and so that's uh, um, we are doing optimization and the robustness study. And also, there's a one piece of work we are trying to do a network cybersecurity. If we have all this large amount of data put together, and how can you ensure the data collections is reliable? You can trust the data. And the second, and uh, you there's no kind, kind of attack because it's happened because for our battery operating system we can because that's our research part so we can remote control it and we had one visitor from other country we, we I think he, he knows how to access it. and when he left and he accessed it and stopped the whole system the, that, that's kind of an incident but uh, it's, uh, that means the system is at the moment is quite vulnerable for any kind of uh, attack or change. Yeah. Thank you. I have one question, quick one. Is it uh, not possible to build the wind power uh, plants at campus? You say it's cloudy and not so much sun, but it uh, mm -hmm. should be windy there, right? Uh, we have land. University of Warwick is quite lucky. Someone gave a massive land to the university, we are, we, but it's uh, planning permission. Even even this battery, we took us four months to go through the council uh, permission to put a temporary building for five years on campus. Okay. If we go through the wind generation, I believe without the permission, okay, okay. maybe yeah, not. Okay. This. No. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we continue. I see that. Uh, yeah. Like, I think we continue. You will have one more presentation, so yeah. it's uh, you can say a question for that. We are, I also think that all presenters are ready in the, uh, the room now. Uh,